Okay. Well, uh, it, it is easier for me to to follow uh, the great talks from my colleagues, especially you know what the general AI and uh, imaging works. So I will blend it, the the, the part uh, with a little bit of genetics. So uh, my uh, my angle is like it really in the intersection between AI imaging and genetics. You know, before even AI joining the game, imaging and genetics uh, has been a flourishing field where we find uh, use uh, uh, traditional imaging and then uh, use the genetic uh, as a tool to find the genes are relevant uh, with all sorts of pathology and uh, image features. But AI enter the game and uh, it makes it much more interesting. So uh, today I'm mostly talking about the, the intersection, but of course uh, the idea can uh, is influenced by the, the breakthroughs in in all over this uh, field. So uh, let's look at the, how traditional imaging genetics was done. It's really simple. You have some images, and then you have some image processing and get some descriptor. Uh, for example, brain imaging you can derive the volume of a hippocampus or retina imaging and you you get some sort of de de descriptor of the vessel shapes uh, and then you uh, hook up with the genetic data and then conducting GWAS or genome-wide association study basically testing one genetic marker at a time for association with the, 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 the phenotypes. And then uh, hopefully uh, if sample size is good enough and the genetic factor is strong, then you, you find the uh, signals that um, those basically genes that cause for, uh, for, for, for these image uh, features. But the limitation of uh, this approach is that the phenotypes are more or less traditionally defined. By, by human expert, but even human expert are limited because our human eye are limited in terms of describing uh, to see the pattern and describing the the uh, the, the image. I mean, so that's why we have a radiology as a uh, as a profession uh, just to 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 do that, and 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 also. Uh, for 3D images, sort of, is beyond what the human and the natural image uh, can do, and it's a little bit beyond what the human intuition could do. Uh, and then, so as a result, the phenotype we use so far are somewhat incomplete uh, or biased, like the bias question. So uh, many times we don't know what what the bias we have, even because we just biased by our our uh, uh, visual cognitive system. So uh, actually, the, the AI has been already helpful, supervised the deep learning, namely just uh, algorithm. Uh, it is it usually a deep learning neural networks, and it would uh, uh, learn from human basically how to generate image uh, to the descriptor, right? But still carry the same biases as human does. <clears throat> so. Uh, just why uh, what we're doing is interesting. We take this unsupervised approach. We hope to derive new phenotypes that is uh, without human labeling and hopefully come uh, uh, be 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 reduce the bias from uh, for, from human labeler as well. So we use uh, unsupervised deep learning for for this task. So how does it work? So in, in fact, uh, Luca mentioned uh, the self-supervised uh, learning, and then uh, mainly there are two approaches. There are actually more, but uh, we are I'm going to present two approaches. One is uh, so-called autoencoder, namely you have an image as an input, and you go through the image encoder uh, with the, and the encode into some bundle of uh, numbers called endophenotypes. And then use the so-called uh, another neural network image decoder, which will reconstruct the input image. And then you just train the model by make sure the reconstructed image is similar to the input. 
and the game will be, be trivial if uh, you, you just pass through the information, right? So we make sure the endophenotype is a bottleneck that is only uh, 128 numbers, for example. That way, it's a very severe compression. You have to learn very useful information at the endophenotypes. We also do this so-called uh, uh, contrastive learning. That's another self-supervised approach where uh, you, you have image and you have a, a sort of repeat of image. It can be left eye, right eye, or uh, bring, bring the MRI from, from one time point and another time point. Um, so, uh, it, or a little bit uh, to perturbation of the, the input image as well. So you have a parallel image encoder, and then you want to make sure uh, this image uh, going through the same uh, image encoder would uh, derive uh, with something that is similar to each other. And you want to try to align this, the, the encoding of the two images. So both are very powerful approaches. And uh, first, let me show you how we do with the autoencoder. Use the brain imaging uh, taken from UK Biobank. UK Biobank, as many of you may know, is a great resource has uh, uh, half a million uh, people in the UK, and uh, part of it has imaging, and everyone has the uh, genetic uh, markers done. So uh, we take uh, 6,000 images from UK Biobank uh, training and then save the remain remainder as a genetic association. And we, uh, it architecture is basically from the T1 or T2, brain image we through 3D uh, convolutional encoder derived 128 dimension vector here called endo and then do the decoder and reconstruct. So those are real images. So you can see the reconstruction is sort of okay. Right? I mean, I, I, I wouldn't trust very high resolution information, but roughly it is this here. Um, yeah, so it, we, we by visual inspection, uh, it looks okay, but of course we check the the, the, the error and it looks okay. It's lost a lot of detail, but I think it's grasped, grasped the, the overall shape. In fact, if we we, uh, we visualize the the embedding or the, the endophenotypes uh, in 2D, um, we see they, they capture uh, the natural variations of uh, human shapes, namely the, the volume of the uh, CSF. And we conducted GWAS. Uh, just uh, run all the 256 phenotypes at the time, and uh, we find a lot of uh, uh, results. Uh, some are really new to, to, to even the, uh, the traditional GWAS done by uh, Bandai, done by traditional uh, image processing pipelines. Uh, and we also have a uh, methods to to understand uh, what these mythical uh, endophenotypes are. We, we inject the uh, noise to one of the vectors and we, we uh, one of dimensions asked to the decoder as a generator. To, to generate the original reconstruction or perturbed reconstruction. We take the difference, repeats, and then we highlight the regions of uh, high variability, and then that tell us this endophenotype is relevant to uh, thalamus Gutman uh, areas. So just a quick summary uh, on this brain imaging uh, exercise. Our endophenotypes uh, compared to the traditional uh, image derived phenotypes. Uh, our uh, uh, phenotype is, is learned rather than software uh, manually derived. Uh, our pre -pro uh, processing is very lightweighted. It only takes a fraction of seconds to generate using GPU. Uh, and and uh, it's more heritable. Uh, and, and the image are uh, less redundant and the feature are less redundant also using our effect, uh, vector, we have the power to reconstruct the image. And we also applied it to say different modalities from Yukiba Bank, the time in uh, diffusion MRI, uh, and, and we show it is 
uh, also works uh, highlighting uh, structures re re relevant to uh, white matter and uh, genetic factors uh, for it. In fact, uh, this ongoing work, but, but it's, we have a good uh, um, correlation with existing uh, findings and find some new new results. Uh, now I'm going to switch gears a little bit to uh, to 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 retina image, and uh, here is just uh, human eyes is uh, interesting because it has duplicates, right, left and right eyes. So it's a natural uh, case for uh, self-supervised learning. We we take uh, the left and eye, right eye, and we want to uh, again this time we use. Uh, uh, actually, different data sets for 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 phenotype uh, to first derive develop the uh, the neural network for for for, for this self uh, similarity of left and right eyes, and when the model is trained, we transfer this model to Yokoyama Bank and do this to us. So uh, again, this is not a, a very very new model, but it's still working very well. We just have uh, uh, eyes from same person. We want to embed into similar vectors, and uh, uh, different person would have d d different vectors. So in, in this way, we will learn the the, the natural uh, variability of uh, uh, the fundus images, and we confirm that uh, when we train the model that shows the school separation between the the matched pair of eyes uh, versus a random pair of eyes, and then it's also a uh, high uh, separation in in UK Valley Bank. So again, we do the GWAS and then we find a lot of uh, uh, signals. Notice this is log log scale, and so those are very significant results. Okay, in, in summary, uh, well, what I showed is that using deep learning. Uh, AI, we can generate phenotype from complex imaging data. And uh, in, in a sense, uh, this is uh, uh, for, for today's term we call it generative AI. Right? We generate uh, some numbers. Uh, uh, and, and then if the number makes sense or not, we can use it to, to predict, uh, say, a stroke or, or uh, any any phenotypes that you are interested in, those are called a generalist uh, uh, imaging model. That's what Luca is talking about. Um, but but uh, we show that uh, in our case, we use uh, uh, genetic uh, studies as a verifier of the AI generation. If it is generate something uh, heritable, we will we'll, 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 we'll pick up by, by genetic association. Right? So. Uh, then we have a powerful loop to to derive uh, 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 genes and factors uh, for, uh, uh, for 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 the imaging uh, features. We're still working on interpretation, uh, uh, but we have some idea. And and with this, I hope we can through collaboration to to apply this to other image types, diseases of interest, uh, to other modalities. Uh, Omics data and maybe novel architectures. Uh, so, of course, nothing can be done without my amazing, amazing team uh, of, uh, uh, with the faculty and the students. And also, just quickly, uh, this is funded by, by two uh, grants uh, and, and then collaborations throughout the, the, the TMC and then the entire nation. Thank you.